Get your gang face on. Get your gang face on. G'day and Get welcome to the Game Face SNL Division face 4 footy show. Will Hunter's my name, filling in for Russell Robertson, the great man who couldn't be with us tonight. Decided to go off and do a couple of other things with Channel 10, so gone on to bigger and better things there, or so he will tell us. Uh, fantastic week in Division 4 footy this week. A couple of top stories. Dandenong, they're finally on the board. Great to see. Scott Moody from Dandenong uh, joins us to chat about that game and the celebrations that followed. Lindhurst, they smashed Frankston in the top of the table clash. But before we go any further, let's have a quick look around the grounds with a Game Face app update. In Division 4, the big story was Dandenong, who finally hit the winner's list with a 33-point triumph over Lindale. The Redlegs took control in the second term and never looked back, and no doubt a big night of well-deserved celebrations down at Greaves Reserve. Well done to you blokes. The other huge result was Lindhurst, who outclassed Franks and Dolphins in the top of the table clash by a whopping 50 points, if you don't mind. Moorabbin took the Chockeys over CPL at home, while Hallam also fell short of South Yarra. In the reserves, there were no blowouts with Lindale, Frankston, CPL and South Yarra, the victors. To the latter, and the Lightning have put a four-point buffer on the Dolphins in the race for the minor premiership, while the Hawks' loss sees them drop out of the top four, unfortunately. Frankston are still yet to be beaten in the reserves, and the Yarras maintain their two-game hold on fourth spot. Uh, yes, yeah, some interesting results there across the board. Not a great day for footy, it must be said, on Saturday, but uh, some fantastic footy played nonetheless. I'd like to, in to uh, introduce our panellist, um, Paddy Cook. He's here most weeks. Paddy, you have a good weekend? Had a great weekend, mate. It was beautiful. Beautiful conditions. I love it. So, yeah, good to be back. Uh, good, uh, good conditions for me back in the day because it used to bring everyone else back <laughs> down to my level. But the, uh, the quick ones like us, will we, we like those conditions. So yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Uh, but as I said off the top, we're delighted to welcome in Scott Moody, one of the uh, stars of the Dandenong side. Scotty, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks for that. Uh, must have been a great feeling on Saturday night. Finally broken through for that win. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, first one for the season. So hopefully a few more. It's, um, it's, it's been a long year, no doubt, but um, it, it's impressive to see that you guys have still stuck fat, um, even though the wins haven't been coming, but it seems like you've got a really good uh, camaraderie and culture around the group and sticking together through, uh, through some testing times. Yeah, it's been pretty good, um, obviously. Uh, testing at times, um, you all know, with the, uh, the late change of the, the coach there, so that was yep. a, bit, yeah, a bit hard on the boys. Um, Training numbers probably haven't been great from the start, um, and you know a lot of lot of new faces, um, but everyone's bonding together pretty well. So um, as we saw on Saturday, um, when things are going right, yeah, we're we're on. So so yeah, congratulations on the win, Scott. Um, can you just fill us in with um, Phil how he's gone about it? So I, I know from from an outside point of view compared to the last few years, he's been um, scoring fairly frequently this year. And that, is it a change that Phil's brought in? Like, is it a game style that he's brought in? Or? Uh, nah, I think him being down there has probably yep. helped a fair <laughs> bit. I think he's kicked uh, probably most of our goals. So, um, no, nah, no, nah, I think we're just winning it a bit more out of the midfield, getting yep. a few more clearances yep. that we haven't had. Um, which, yeah, obviously results in, in scoring. So. so did he change much structurally compared to what Boyd had last few years, or no. has he sort of followed on with the no, same No, he's of... just followed on, really. Yep. Um, probably we're a little bit behind most of the other sides with, with some structures and stuff due to him taking over and the numbers yep. probably not being as great as what every other club would have had yep. so far. So, yeah. so so, what do you do to, to keep it or to get it back on par with everyone else? Like, what, what are you trying to do to turn it around to bring more numbers through the door? Because just yeah. from an outside perspective, it seems like he's a travelling in the right direction. Things do seem to be improving on field, so... Yeah, Phil's a pretty relaxed sort of guy, and he hasn't... He This is his first time coaching, yep. so um, he's come into it, you know... Really well. You know, first coaching role, he's moved in from, he was from Fentrigully? Yeah, he's yeah. from Fentrigully, so he played yep. there for a long time yep. and played at a few other clubs at a higher level as well. So yep. he's got a good, um, he's got a good background. Yep. Um, obviously, yeah, first time coaching, so he's pretty fresh to it himself. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's enjoying it and um, 
keeping keeping it positive is the main thing, even when numbers aren't yep. that great. Yep, creating um, buy-in from the players. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, fantastic. So even the last couple of weeks, we still we still haven't had great numbers, but we've yep. had an enjoyable time at training. Uh, that's that's what you can that's, ask for. That's, yeah, we'll build from yep. there. So yeah. and, and it seems like you're having a dip in most games, having a, a real fair dinkum yep. crack. Um, and on Saturday, obviously, you got yourselves into a winning position probably early in the game. You led for most of the afternoon, um, and then obviously three-quarter time. What was the sort of feeling uh, around the playing group? Was it a case of, um, and, you know, wins haven't been uh, as frequent as you'd probably like, was it more a case of, you know what, we don't want to let this yeah. this slip, or was it more a case of, come on, boys, we've got a real good opportunity to really blow this away and get something? A bit of both, really, I think. Um, when we played them earlier in the season, we were, what, 27 points up early in the third quarter. So we, uh, and then we lost by about 30 points. So uh, we didn't really want to let that happen again. Yeah. <laughs> Take the opportunity when it comes. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%. And uh, yeah, well deserved victory 9 12 66 to 4 9 33. Doubled their score there. Um, and how are the, uh, the celebrations after the game? I mean, it's uh, been a long time coming. And you finally got there? Yeah, um, it was good. Uh, a few of the boys probably would have woken up early on the... Well, not, a, not early, that would have been out early on the Sunday morning, but woken up on the Sunday afternoon with uh, some sore heads. So. And, uh, As you, you'd expect that. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, well deserved. So... Um, we uh, we saw the video. You sang the song with uh, with gusto. Um, take us into that in, into that room in that moment. You've uh, you've won the game. It's been uh, been a while bet- between drinks. Describe the feeling among amongst oh, the boys. just relief, I guess. Yeah, um, I guess every time we get a win, it's a bit of relief that we you put in the put in the work and to just get a little bit of rewards. Um, yeah, quite rewarding. Yeah. We, we used to always have a, have a saying that was, you know, enjoy the moment. So, yeah, congratulations and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really enjoy them. So, because for, you know, for sides, winning's not always just a, something that's a given, you know. Some clubs have to, or actually all clubs have to work really hard for them. And, and yeah, when, when they come along, like especially the first one in a while, well done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is, uh, what, your eighth season? Yeah, um, eighth down year. At the, yeah. Uh, down yeah. at the Red Lakes. Um, what's changed in that, in that time? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a <bit> like <laughs> uh, coaches, presidents, players, yeah, a lot. <laughs> describe, describe, describe the mood for season 2019, because obviously you've got uh, uh, Big Damo in charge down there running yeah, the show. He's yeah. doing a good job. Yeah, doing a really good job. The, uh, the whole committee going in the right direction. So um, starting from a fair way behind, but... Um, they're, they're doing the right things and they're slowly, it's not going to happen overnight, but slowly yep. building things, yeah. Every time I head down there it's, and, and, and see you guys, you seem like you're just having a, a hell of a lot of fun, which, you know, for, for most clubs when, you, when you're losing games, your head's down and, you know, it's all a bit doom and gloom, but it, it, there's a fair bit of positivity around the side that, you know, probably hasn't had the success. How do you keep that going? Oh, I guess you have to, just have to, um, yeah. With Phil coming in as coach, he's he's definitely brought something, something new. We've had Boydy the last couple of years, and I guess, and he was really good, but um, just the change in face, I guess, helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, has Phil committed for next year as well? Uh, Are you aware? Sorry, I know it's a bit of a, on yeah, the spot po- thing, but possi- possibly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he's pretty keen to hang yep. around, yep. whether or not he'll be a senior coach. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure he'll. Just, just, just for the again. playing group, yeah. sorry, it's it's a huge thing to have a, a coach recommit, and if he's willing to go again, you know, you, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, no, big things for, at, for him. At this stage, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty confident he'll, he'll hang around yep. at least as a playing yep. leader. So yeah, and uh, you've obviously got a few um, characters. Around the club, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about um, whether or not you'd be uh, stick around and how your body's tracking. But there's a bloke down at your side that uh, his body just does not seem to give up. I speak, of course, of Mick Reed, who's old enough to be my granddad, and he's still <laughs> running around. He is a remarkable human being. Yeah, there was a few weeks ago. He was um, so he'd play in the reserves at midday, and then find out that we're a couple short in the seniors, so he'd come and play in the seniors as well. <laughs> and then he'd back it up and play over 50s or whatever it is on a Sunday. So, 
He's, he's Three ga- games in a week, I'll wake up on a <laughs> Sunday morning and I can't move. So. No, yeah. unreal, because he's, uh, he's, he's no spring chicken, but he's, he's a good fella and great to have a, like, not only of that experience, but just a fun voice around the playing group just to keep the morale up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's, um, he's an interesting unit. So. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't mind a beer on top. Uh, he loves a beer, so, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Celebrating after a win would probably be be a normal night for Reedy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking of celebrating, he's probably still down there. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking speaking of the celebrations, I mean, I know you, you left early because you're a little bit more responsible uh, these days. But who would some of the blokes that'd be propping up that bar on Saturday night? Ah, uh, Cam Riley. He's a little bloke, but um, he thinks he can drink a lot, so um, <laughs> he becomes quite annoying after a couple of beers. Um, but guys like uh, who are, uh, the Chief, the Chief loves a drink going out on a Saturday night. I think is a, it's Lava Lounge they head off to. So I'm, I'm personally, I'm not too sure where or what that is, but <laughs> that's where they head to. So yeah, they would have had a good night. Oh, that's it. You gotta, you gotta have fun on the field, but you gotta have fun off the field and well, keep that playing right, group yeah. together. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Just yeah. on a, a bit of a question here, one of my mates, Dad. Plays down at uh, Danning on Joe Ganji. What can you tell us about him? <laughs> Not much, to be honest. <laughs> he uh, he's come down and played a few games. So yep. um, comes and plays and then heads off again. Okay. So, but, do, um, do you hear much about what he gets up to outside of, uh, outside uh, of the club? No, that's no, a loaded but, question. Um, <laughs> I'm sure if you asked Reedy that question, yep. he'd, he'd nah. give you a few stories. He's a bit of an angry dad, that one. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just leave it at that. Beautiful. No, uh, very good. It's uh, as we said. It's awesome that you guys got the win and uh, you know break that duck and uh, glad that you you celebrated appropriately and hopefully responsibly. But uh, no, fantastic. Hopefully that leads into bigger and better things as well for the yeah. not only season twenty nineteen but beyond. Thank you. All righty, moving on. Uh, Lindhurst. They were the other big story of the weekend. They had a fantastic win on the weekend. Top of the table clash against the Frankston Dolphins. It promised to be an absolute barnstormer, but it turned out to be a little bit of a disappointment for an unbiased observer. Uh, Lindhurst, they uh, pretty much wiped the floor with Frankston. A 50-point win in difficult conditions, 75 to uh, to 25. And, you know, they kept Frankston to one goal three at three-quarter time, which as a premiership contender isn't good enough, Paddy. No, no. I, um, I watched the first half of this game and... Lindhurst um, had the wind, and it was a howling wind, an absolute howling wind in that first quarter. Um, the ball stayed the whole time in in Lindhurst's half. Um, one inside 50 to Frankston in that first quarter, and then, you know, I sort of thought at, at quarter time, now's Frankston's chance, and then the first 10 minutes it stayed in, um, in Lindhurst's front half again. So, yeah, pretty disappointing. Lindhurst um, were just able to get first hands on the footy all day, um, and even into the howling wind, just drag it forward. They they played the conditions really well, and Frankston just didn't look like they turned up. The the good thing for Frankston though is that come September, you're not going to come across conditions like that. And so, I really do think that conditions really helped Lindhurst in this one. But um, whether whether the conditions are there or not, you've really got to attack the ball, and they just didn't seem to do it at times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scotty, bit of a surprising result. Did you see this one coming? Not so much no, the no, win, I didn't but... really. No, no. Um, what is it? They're almost ten goals. So yeah, yeah no, nah, I would have would have put that in for a close one, mm. um, especially on a wet day as well. But yeah, yeah, they're both uh, they're both up there, um, and you've played against both of these sides, I think. So um, which which of those would you say has probably got the nod in terms of? Oh, I've play, missed two is... games this season, and they've, <laughs> and they've both been against the Frankston. So I can't say too much about them. Do your homework, Wilbur, before you start. <laughs> <asking>. <laughs> All righty, moving on. It's the uh, Division 4 Team of the Week time. It's what everyone watches this show for. But before we get to the uh, the Team of the Week, just a quick shout-out for the guys at Bendigo Bank Caulfield Park. Um, they're very generous supporters of Game Face and their footy show coverage. Um, 80% of their profits are given back to the local community, which is absolutely outstanding, Paddy, for... Uh, uh, for, for a bank to do something like that for the local community. That's massive. They're huge for footy clubs as well. The, am- the amount of money that they put through footy clubs is just phenomenal, so thank you. Absolutely. And uh, 
Game Face have changed all their banking over to uh, to Bendigo Bank as well, and uh, you should too if you're watching this. So, um, again, big ups to the uh, guys at Bendigo Bank, Caulfield Park, Jignesh and the team. Keep up the great work, and, uh, yeah, make sure you get down and support them. So the Division 4 Team of the Week brought to you by Bendigo Bank, Caulfield Park. Um, we'll start it off with the back line. Stan Stusky from, uh, from Dandenong. Anthony Besson from Lindhurst and Nick Ford from Dandenong. Two red legs in the uh, in the back line. Both had good games on the weekend, Scotty. Yeah, uh, Stan definitely going on. Um, is that Trent Day from uh, Lindale, who yep. uh, he kicked five against us um, when we played him earlier in the year. He went down to him. I think he kicked one, but uh, didn't see much of the ball. So Stan definitely shut him down. And uh, Forty's been in uh, some consistent form as well. Yeah, yeah, he likes running around, getting a bit of the ball, doing his own thing. So <laughs> that's what we lo- that's what we like to see. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. And from the half back line, uh, CPL's Liam, Hick- Liam Hickman, uh, Frankston's Brennan Murphy, and South Yarra's Zach Ma. A uh, very handy half-back line. In the centre line, Tristan Pace from Dandenong, Jared Murphy from Lindhurst, and Sean Jackson from Moorabbin. Pace, not the first time we've seen him in our Team of the Week this year. Um, been playing some good footy as well. Yeah, no, really good footy. Um, he's probably been our best player so far this season. For someone that pretty much walked off the street to and said, I want a game of footy. Do you mind if I train with you? So, what a bad pick-up there. Uh, was, uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty good pick-up. So I think he had trained at a couple of other places before us, and I don't know what it was. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't see a skill or yeah. anything, but he, he decided to stay on. Uh, so don't talk yourself good, down, mate. There's, a, there's oh, 100%. The world would do that. Just, uh, he saw something he liked and he stayed <laughs> yeah. with it. So. All right, from That's the half-forward line, Lockie Simpson from Moorabbin, Ryan Hensel from Lindhurst, and Corey Wilshire, who put on an absolute clinic from Lindhurst. Yeah, and uh, Hensel's been playing some uh, good footy for Lindhurst as well um, throughout the season. Um, Justin Isaac in the forward line for Moorabbin. Uh, the big fella Phil Musket from Dandenong. Um, just getting it done week in, week out. The playing coach there, we've spoken enough about him. Jack Calloway from South Yarra as well. And in the rucks, our man here, Scott Moody from Dandenong, Scott Steghouse from South Yarra, and Charlie Gardner from Lindhurst. Pleased with your own performance on the weekend? Oh, yeah, there wasn't too many tap downs to the midfield, but um, the uh, the ruckman from Lindale, Lindale was a big guy. He's a big um, boy. He's, he's a very he'd big have boy. to be the best tap ruckman in the league, so it was more about trying to um, trying to sort of cull him a little yep. bit. Nullify so, his influence. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He did so that. ho- hopefully we did that all right. No, yeah. you certainly did, mate. So well done to you. Congrats on your selection. Um, and rounding out the pine, Jack Shalassian from, from Hallam. He's uh, a regular fixture in this team of the week. Uh, Zednik Hostelek from Moorabbin. Rory McIver from... Uh, sorry, Zed Hostelek from Moorabbin. Did I say from Moorabbin or Hallam? Doesn't matter, mate. Let's just roll with it. Doesn't matter. Plays footy. Yep. And Rory McIver from Hallam. And Alex Evans from South Yarra <laughs> rounding out the pine there. So congrats to uh, everyone that's uh, been picked. Very good job. Keep up the good work. And great to see a number of Dan and Ong players in there as well. Love to see them playing some good footy. And well, that's it. They've, they've been, you know, improving all year. There's been, you know, a lot more scores kicked from them this year. And they finally got a, got a score on the board for, to, to get the first win. So well done. And they deserve to be in there. Well done, guys. Yeah, bloody oath. Congratulations. All right. Round 11 this week in Division 4. And uh, four massive games to sink our teeth into. First one, off the top, Lindale versus Frankston Dolphins. Probably going to be a one-sided affair, Cookie. Frankston's going to bounce back, and they'll bounce back heavily. They'll, they'll be really disappointed with what they throw out. And, you know, Frankston really do see themselves as a, as a contender, and as they should. Um, and I don't know whether they just overthought things last week, but they weren't, they weren't themselves, and they'll bounce no. back hard this week, so they'll come good. And make a massive statement, I think, Scotty. Yeah, I reckon so. Um, Lindale are obviously struggling a little bit. Um, And, yeah, Frankston, after what happened last week, will definitely bounce back. Yeah, uh, I think we're unanimous in that one there. Big game, Dandenong versus South Yarra. Um, Yarras have been in good form. How are you attacking this one, Scott? I reckon we'll go in with a fair bit of confidence. We Last time we played South Yarra, we were 10 points behind, I'm pretty sure. At, uh, at half time and they blew it out a little bit after that but uh, knowing that we held them for that first half and I'm, I'm sure we'll have a 
a uh, lot stronger side than what we did when we played them the first time. So, yeah, South Yarra for me, but Danny Long will be competitive. I agree with you, Cookie, and uh, looking forward to seeing how uh, how far you've improved and really show them uh, uh, a spirited performance. Um, Hallam taking on Moorabbin at the at the Hawks' nest. Moorabbin have been in some good form, Cookie, and uh, yeah, Hallam. Really need to start getting the uh, wins on the board if they're to play finals footy. Well, both of them are at five wins for the year so far. Um, this back half of the season between Hallam, Moorabbin and CPL is going to be huge. I'm going to pick Hallam on this one, but uh, anything can happen. So it's Hallam for me. What do you think? Yeah, I reckon that's probably going to be the uh, the game of the round. Um, it could go either way, so I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be picking one or the other. Sitting on the fence, very <laughs> yeah. nice. You get splinters on your bum, you do that. No, I think um, Moorabbin, they've turned their ground into a bit of a fortress, but, you know, I think it's a much bigger ground for Orley Road, and I think that might play into Hallam's hands yep. a little bit in that one. So Hallam for me. And the final game, CPL taking on Lindhurst down at the Den. Um, Lindhurst, can they do anything wrong at the moment? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> They've been going all right, so you'd, you'd have to tip them again. Yeah, South Yarra showed a couple of weeks ago that they are beatable. They are beatable. Um, the last time these two played, Lindhurst were only a goal up at half time and then run away with a ten goal win. Um, but that was at Lindhurst on the big condi- big ground. You know, difficult conditions to play on. At CPL, it's going to be a bit closer and I think it'll be a bit tighter. I'm, I'm still tipping Lindhurst to win, but CPL and Lindhurst always have really good games. So. Uh, Lindhurst for me, but it will be closer than expected. Yeah, Lindhurst for me as well, and uh, I think they might get that one done quite convincingly. Alrighty, that's uh, that's all I've got time for this evening. Um, thanks for joining us wherever you're watching us from. Make sure you download the Game Face Record app. Uh, it's got everything you need for community footy and Southern League footy as well. The scores, fixtures, news, everything. I know Paddy's on it, loves it, loves it. Can't get enough of it. Thanks. Congrats again on the win, mate. It's uh, doing some good things down there. Thank you. And uh, no doubt the next one won't be too far away. Paddy, again, great work from you. As always, we expect nothing less from you, though. I am pretty brilliant, mate, so you're welcome. Oh, 100%. Um, That's all I've got time for this week. Make sure you crack into uh, a little bit of footy this weekend. There's some cracking games to uh, to look forward to, so make sure you get onto that. If you miss anything, download the game face out. Check it all on there. And we'll catch you again next week. Bye for now. Get your game face on.